Today I'm going to show you how I tone and trace out phone and data cables in seven different environments. I'm even going to attempt to prove or disprove an internet theory about how to tone out a cable when it is connected to a network switch. If you don't know me, I'm Michael, I'm with Field Tech Academy, and I discuss all things Field Tech related. Let's get into it. In my first example, I'm going to show you how I trace a cable that is present at a patch panel or a network rack back to the data or the telecom closet using a RJ45 coupler. This video was sponsored by CloudWork Pro, your source for contract IT field service work. Find out more at cloudworkpro.com or click the link in the description. This is the cable that we're looking for. This is an old Cat5e cable, so it will work for network. It was previously used to bring DSL signal to this suite. This is currently terminated as RJ11, and it is a male plug. So I'm going to illustrate to you how you would tone a cable with an end on it if you didn't want to cut the end off of it. Obviously, if I'm going to use this for network, I would end up cutting it anyway. But I'm using this for illustration purposes so you can understand how the coupler toning works. I just connect my cable into that. It's going to send the signal down the center pairs and I plug my tone generator into this side of the coupler and this goes out to the closet. As you can see right now we've got continuity. That tells me that it's going into a live circuit of some sort on the other end. I'm going to put it on the alternating tone and we're going to go to the closet and see if we can find it. You're always looking for any kind of breadcrumbs or any kind of clues that would help. So you're looking to see if that sweet number is marked, which I don't see anything marked as 110 right off. But I do know that the cable at the other end is white. That will help to eliminate maybe how many cables I'm actually going to try to tone out. I would assume that you're working in a particular suite in a multi-tenant building. So you'd be looking for any kind of labels that would say like suite 100 or that might be 106. Here you've got 108 marked. Here you've got feeder to suite 100 marked. Again, I'm gonna look for a white cable that I might can trace out, or I'm gonna run down the blocks. Sometimes it's harder to tone a cable on the outside jacket. Sometimes that tone won't really penetrate that jacket like it should. Right now I'm just looking around at the white cables. found it in this bundle. Now I just have to figure out where that goes. That's our cable right there. So now we can begin to actually visually trace it as well as using our tone generator. So by moving it, I'm seeing it is going down into this bundle. So I know this is my cable here. And of course, with all this, you want to be gentle as you're moving things around so you don't unplug something. So there's my white cable. Now I've found where it goes on the block. So this is the signal cable coming off of that. They're only using the orange pair. The other pairs are wrapped around and which is a typical telco method. They just take whatever pairs they're not using and they wrap it around the base of the cable. They actually have the blue pair going up to one set of pins and the orange pair going to another set of pins. Since I'm converting this to RJ45, I don't really care about what pins this is on and where it goes to on the back end. I'm gonna pull this off of the block and I'm gonna take this and put an RJ45 end on it. But that's an example of tracing from a suite back to the block. Now for scenario two, I'm going to show you how I traced a cable using an RJ45 coupler to find a cable that was terminated to a 110 block. Get my tone trace set. You either need to plug in your tone trace clip directly into the wall, or if you need to plug into a cable, then you need an RJ45 coupler. I'm going to turn on our sniffer. I'm going to listen for tone. Let's see if we get anything. Now the wall plate was marked 6V1. If I look at the patch panel, I've got 6Ds, and they changed to 9s. Now I did tone just to make sure that I'm not getting any sound on any of these ports.
I found these 110 blocks over on the wall, and I noticed that some of these are actually going over to the switch already. It looks like they have upgraded off of their old Avaya digital phone system and converted to VoIP, and they're just using the existing wiring. My jack was labeled 6B1. I've got 6B1 here. Once that tone changes to that faster tone, you know you're really on the right one. All I should have to do now is cross-connect from this port over to the switch, and we should be good. Once I've identified my cable, the final step is to do a cable test on it. Pass, so I know my cable is the right cable, and it's good. In scenario three, I'm going to show you an example of how I use my finger to help do some toning and tracing. I've obviously got my toner that I can put on the pins. In addition to that, I can just take my finger. Even though my sniffer is way out here, I can just put my finger on it and get the signal. In the event that you're getting close to it and you're getting too much noise or too much interference, that's one way to get your toner away from the noise and still be able to verify you're on the right pins. Now, if that's an active phone line and the phone rings, you're going to get a little buzz. Moving on to scenario four, I'm going to show you how I trace a cable within a closet, maybe starting from a D mark, trying to figure out where that goes on a 66 block or in another location within that same closet. In this case, we're going to trace from this actual D mark block that has jacks on it out to the block. Normally, there's a little grid here that shows you for each plug what the phone numbers are. We're going to assume that I know that this is the phone number that I'm looking for. These simply unplug and expose a jack. By unplugging that, you're doing a couple of things. Number one, you're taking the telco out of the mix. When this is unplugged, the telco signal no longer flows from the telco through this jack. So I've actually clipped my alligator clips with my bed of nails on two different wires. Now I'm just going to listen on the block to see if I can find where that cable goes. I'm looking for any kind of increase in volume. Okay, there the volume increased. It did not really increase over here. So that looks like my cable right there. So if I touch on the pins itself, I get a good strong signal. So now I know that this cable with the orange and blue is this cable with the orange and blue. In scenario five, I'm gonna be discussing how I tone a cable by connecting my tone generator to a 66 block and then locate it either somewhere else in the closet or back at the D mark. If we knew that this was the pair that we wanted, we can tone to figure out where it goes in the closet. This is where with a 66 block, you use the C shaped pieces to actually go on the pins of the 66 block. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna identify which set of pins I'm on. And so I pull this from the side and I can see these two sets of pins moving. This set of pins right here, is the same as this set of pins in terms of signal. They're connected in the back. So whatever you terminate to this set of pins will show up on this set of pins. But this is a dividing line between these two sides of the block. So if you have signal here, you're not gonna have that same signal on these two pins on this side of the block. As you can see here, they're using bridge clips. So the bridge clips are what would carry a signal from the left side to the right side or vice versa. We're gonna use our alligator clips we're going to put them on one set of pins here. And we can put these side by side because of the angle that keeps them from touching. So now they are pointed away from each other. Now I'm going to hang this off the block. Again, I don't want this hanging off of these and pulling loose. Now we obviously already know where the signal goes, but in theory, we would go hunting. We would listen all along the different pins. We would go to different blocks, different bundles of cable. You try to be very thorough and exhaustive in your search, but eventually it would lead us to this cable. See how that gets a little bit louder? 
and that lets us know that our cable is coming through this jack right here. For scenario six, I'm gonna talk about how I tone a cable from a wall jack back to a patch panel port when it is not connected to a switch. Here's our wall jack that we're gonna be toning out. It's already marked as D18. So in this example, we know where we're toning, but I'm still gonna to demonstrate to you how it works. So again, this is RJ11, this is RJ45, doesn't matter. I'm just gonna snap that in. I wanna make sure that my tone generator is doing the red blink, which tells me it's an alternating tone. And we'll go test it at the patch panel. You're gonna turn your probe on or your sniffer, whatever you like to call it, and you're just gonna stick it in each patch panel port, trying to touch the pins at the top of the patch panel to listen for your tone from the other end. As you can see, when I touch to the actual pins on the inside of that patch panel port, it becomes really loud. So it's very obvious when you have the right jack. And now for the fun part, I'm gonna see if I can prove or disprove the internet rumor of how to get around the problem that techs face when they try to tone out a cable that is connected to a switch. If you're not already familiar with this, when you're trying to tone a cable that runs out to a switch, the tone gets swallowed by the switch and you cannot actually tone it out at the switch side. But supposedly there's a solution. So we're gonna see if it works. We have the same tone still generating at the wall jack. I know exactly what port this is and watch what happens because it's plugged into a switch. I mean, there is a faint, ever so faint signal. Not enough that I would have any confidence that I would be finding the right cable with that faint of a signal. And that's with me knowing exactly which cable I'm supposed to be toning. So you can see that toning to a cable that's plugged into a switch can be very, very difficult. And that's where we're gonna test this internet rumor. Before we move on to the next scenario, I wanna just take a moment to introduce you to our video sponsor, Cloudwork Pro. Cloudwork Pro is an on-demand IT field services marketplace where clients come together with field technicians to perform service work all across the United States and Canada. Cloudwork Pro stands apart from other IT field service marketplaces in a few distinct ways. Cloudwork Pro vets and does a one-on-one -on -one interview with every technician that applies to be a part of the marketplace. Because of these high standards, the technicians on Cloudwork Pro have an average of 14 years of experience in the IT field service industry. So if you join the Cloudwork Pro Marketplace, you can be assured that you're gonna be working alongside other IT professionals. In addition, the clients that place tickets on Cloudwork Pro are held to a high standard as well. The technicians have given the clients on Cloudwork Pro a 99.5% satisfaction rating. So you know that your talents are gonna be rewarded and appreciated. If you'd like to join the Cloudwork Pro Marketplace as a technician or as a buyer, visit them at cloudworkpro.com or you can click the link in the description. The link in the description is a referral link and it will let Cloudwork Pro know that you were sent to them by Field Tech Academy. I also have a playlist on my YouTube channel that goes into more details about different aspects of the Cloudwork Pro marketplace. I'll do a pop-up above that will link you directly to that if you'd like to check that out. The theory is if we take one of our alligator clips and crimp it onto one of the pairs or conductors, and we take the other alligator clip and we put it onto a ground of some sort, that it will send a stronger signal that we can actually detect even when it's plugged into a switch. So we're gonna see if that works. So I'm gonna use my alligator clips and my bed of nails to do one single conductor. It has to be the red one, keep that in mind. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put it on a ground. Most of the time network wall plates are just drywall inserts, so there's no ground to them really. You want to find something that has a ground. So if you've got an electrical plug nearby, you can just go on the metal of it. So I'm just going to click on that because I don't want to get into the electrical and risk being shocked. And I don't want you to either and blame me. Then we're going to turn our toner on. Again, I'm going to put it on alternating tone and we'll go tone in the back and see if we can hear it now, even though it's connected to a switch. Now, again, I know what cable it is, but I'm trying to prove the theory. So already at this point, I've got ghost signal. Clearly it's louder than it was. Now with ghost signal, that can make things challenging because I'm getting tone all the way around. But it did get louder when I got in this area, which is where my cable is. So let's see if we can really narrow it down because in theory, in a real world environment, you're not gonna know which cable it is. So you need to know for sure. So it's still gonna take a little bit of process of elimination. 
I think that if I didn't know what cable it was, I would still be a little confused whether it was three or four or two based on how loud it was. What's happening is that signal is so strong that it's actually going through the switch and going through all the cables, at least to an extent. It was considerably louder when I was at the front end of the switch and the front end of the patch panel. At least though, it got me in the ballpark. If you can get me in the ballpark, then I can kind of, you know, we could disconnect a cable to see what happens. Then I'm at least only disconnecting cables in a certain section. And if the site is not operational, then you can certainly unplug cables. If they are operational, you'll have to maybe get permission to let them know you're gonna potentially take something down and just do it as quickly as possible and as few as possible until you know for sure. Because if I was to disconnect the cable that is the correct one, then the ghost signal would be totally different. See how the ghost signal died when I unplugged this cable? So I'm no longer getting it here. I still got a little bit of ghost signal going on, but now that I have this cable unplugged, it's not as strong. And if I stick this directly into the patch panel port, I get a good strong signal so I know for sure that that is the right patch panel port, which is the right cable. I would say that the internet rumor is true. You can connect a tone generator to a conductor of your cable and connect it to a ground and it will overcome the infamous switch swallowing the signal problem. This video was sponsored by Cloudwork Pro, your source for IT field service contracting all across the United States. If you'd like to sign up as a technician or a client, click the link below or visit them at cloudworkpro.com. I hope you enjoyed me showing you all these different ways to tone and trace a cable. If you got value today, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Let's get you out in the field making money. I'll see you in the next video.